Ta-da! So, you have a home. You have a swimming pool. You have a model railway. Mm, not yet. Have a slot car track? Getting there. You save just enough room on your piece of paradise for a regulation two-lane bowling alley. Needless to say, maybe you just spent last weekend digging a moat around your home as your last home improvement. If you've done all that, nothing else to do, join me today because today we're going to install a two-story airport into the home. Why? Because there were no more kitchen sinks left. Now it may be hard to believe, but some 12 years ago I did again commence building an airport but never quite got around to finishing it. As you can see by the pictures, I simply ran out of space. Pixelport is the software you want. You can print your ground scales up on your own printer and piece it together how you like. It's the only way to go. This time I did not. I took a pre-printed ground foil, laid it down, and that's where we are. But I did have great fun building this one, and I got more customization out of it. Of course, the focus is the model railway at the moment, but it's nice to sit back and reminisce. I do have these pieces of the old ones still in storage somewhere, so I may pull them out and get up to something more creative later down the track. Still, as you can see, the joins were never all that perfect, but it was great fun. So the grass that we've used for the airfield, uh, I originally had made another airport that was using this particular knock grass, but in this t occasion, we went for the uh, spring meadow, which is a little bit more green and you can get a bit more of a comparison there. I was after a bit more of a cleaner, lush feel. Again, it's probably something more you might see in a Europe sort of airport or something that it's modeled on, not so quite dry, whereas this actually is probably more typical of something you're gonna see in Australia. But I wanted something a little greener. As you know, I obviously have a thing for the green color. That's what I chose. So construction begins. The ground foil arrives, post packed up, and may I just say it's a pain to flatten that thing out, but we did get it rolled out here. Great picture because it shows originally the larger um, gateways. So here's where the shelf is, here's where we're gonna do it. Hey look, I'm back in the bank manager's office. I must have gone back in the past again. Me and that time travel, I tell you. Look, I'm only back here because I couldn't, it was so fine that it's blown away on me. Just talking about this saw for a second. So here it is. We're just cutting up our uh, little bit of um, uh, dressed uh, pine that we're using for the frame of this model airport. And obviously as I had the, the clumps of them and, and racked them together, clamped it off, and then was just cutting to trim them. I mean, have a look at that. These are absolutely just the most perfect little wafers that this, this is cutting off. So again, what I went for, I'm very happy with this particular saw. Again, most of our saws and all our, our tools are all DeWalt. Um, but this Metabo one was exceptionally recommended to me. Again, I'm coming from a 10 inch blade down to an eight inch. Um, and, but this just gets everywhere. I've got just this fantastic reach with the boom when I come across with the saw. So I can really cut some quite wide type of materials uh, with that particular Makita blade on it. The, couldn't get any finer. I couldn't be any happier as if you're looking for a new saw, just as a general thing. Really, seriously, check this out. Fantastic dust management uh, as well with this. Now we cut up the ground foils because we're gonna split this on two levels. We glue them down onto a piece of MDF and then we start the subconstruction of a frame. So the frame is just dressed pine as you can see. We've drilled some holes in for the cable routes and indeed that's plastic capping. You'll notice that it's painted white. That's to get rid of the smell of MDF, no other so reason. So we've used this composite here. Uh, it's rather good for mounting the um, rest of that to airport terminal that we've cut out using scissors. Didn't use that. Well, we did, but the cut was too rough, so I just sat there with scissors, did it all. Now, Loctite 406, I've just got some uh, stock standard uh, no, uh, neodymium um, um, magnets, and we've just slotted them on. And again, I can never oversell the point about baking pa paper. I really need to do an episode on that exclusively, very important. So here they are upside down. I've just popped this Loctite foil on and I did it the other way around. So this is the adhesive section that you would keep on the magnet that you'd peel off and stick to this. Now I'm going the other way. As I said, Loctite 406, dangerous stuff. Be awfully careful with this one. Um, but the whole idea is the magnet will still hold with that on and that just protects it against the paint. So as you can see, the magnets will just make contact here on the metal rail. Should look nice. 
sign shops, they are invaluable. Head over to one, they'll have all these offcuts of uh, things like aluminium and stuff, which is what I originally wanted to use, but it seemed a bit overkill for this. I know I get excellent, excellent structural strength uh, from this uh, uh, composite anyway. And there's also a thinner, lighter one um, that I may actually use for doing the um, curvature of the terminal or PVC, I don't know. We'll come to that tomorrow or another day. Um, the other thing is like, this is another offcut as well they used for uh, putting up uh, aluminium signs there. Now, at the end of the day, how is this just not useful for everything that we do? So when you're looking for materials and stuff like that, uh, people, they're glad to just get rid of this. They pay to have scrap uh, removed. So at the end of the day, some really, really top quality stuff so what are we up to with this cardboard tube? Well, actually, this particular cardboard tube was how uh, the uh, runway foils actually arrived. But as you can see, the ends have been lopped off. And the reason, I also took a section of that old runway too, snipped off that gray. And uh, what we're up to over here, as you can see, is here's the cookie we just cut off there, nice and sexy. And then obviously, here's the bit of runway we cut off, and then we're gonna wrap it around here so it gives a nice little bottom to the end of it. And then we can, this is just some car that was attached, standard airport terminal template. We'll take that and we can wrap it and attach it to the angle we want. So as we come in over here, you can see what we're up to here. And there's a piece of board. Now you'll see I've actually attached little uh, feet underneath. Now, We've got a bit of light here. It's obviously darker when you're looking at it as a human from here, but that's just about the right height where uh, obviously all your luggage trucks and things would go under. So, and I sort of kept it in line with where that mortar joint was. So it sort of goes away to a gray thing, but you'll notice just some little black legs that are sort of just supporting that to hold it and keep it level at the right height. That is an old plastic coat hanger. I just cut that up. And a piece of uh, cheap, nasty uh, coat hanger that we just uh, quickly snipped up there. There's the other one. And at the end of the day, the magnets are there, but obviously there's a bit of weight in this. So you can see the little legs there much better. But that's how it does, and we clip it on, and that's all there is to it. I mean, really, this whole project is getting exceptionally cheap. As I said with the tube at the moment, that's just joining up at the moment. I can't tell you enough how important it is Baking paper. If you're not using this stuff, it's incredible. Again, how much cheaper can I get? Goodness me. Now, just a quick check to make sure those levels and heights look right. So you notice in all my videos, I carry the same two pens in the top. They are Artline 0.4 millimeter fine tip felt tip pens. They're just the most useful for me. There's no doubt about it. But as you can see, and uh, here's another one here, so you can see the actual uh, measurement on it. But I use it just to display, particularly when I'm looking for a reference. It's no good me using a five cent piece, which is similar to a penny in the United States or, or whatever you're using in the UK and Europe. I don't know. So as my reference point, I like to use a pen. But I mean, I just use it. And what incredible detail we have at one to 400 with these catering trucks from Herpa, for example. Again, my airport bridges that I'm using, I'm particularly happy with these ones. Now, these were actually Gemini Jets ones that I bought probably more than 12 years ago. And they've been in storage. And just being in storage, you can see they've got that horrible yellowing and marking and just by being in the box. So I think these are quite the step up for what we're going to be using for them. Again, got a few little tugs there for uh, getting the, the jets out and just a few bits of ground accessories here, a couple of lights and of course the, um, I'm sorry, I had to go and look it up. I forget about all these uh, acronyms sometimes. It is indeed, what we've got here is what is known as the Safe Dock Ramp Information Display System or RIDS for short, another acronym to add to everything else. At the end of the day, not that you can probably see it on the phone, but basically it's a head up display when they get to the gates there that gives them the identification of how close it is as they get to where they need to stop and other information can be displayed accordingly um, as required, how close they are before they need to stop and that. We see more and more of it these days, um, but that's what that's all about. As you can see, I've just put a sheet of uh, galve underneath it just to give it a bit of rigid support under under there um and also because it'll also just hide all those cables there's no way i'm going to try and cable manage that lot 
Now what are we up to here with a baking tray, a pair of side cutters and a whole bunch of cut off bits of insulation? Well, I have a lot of LEDs that need trimming up for this project, so what better way to spend quality time with my happy wife, happy life than sitting down while she enjoys some first class ball plop on TV? Yes, Bold and the Beautiful, or indeed a trending TV show in Australia called Married at First Sight. Absolute claptrap that keeps me more than well focused on being productive and cutting these cables up. Look. I'm sorry I don't have a more appealing picture to share with you that we had something on the baking tray that she prepared. Oh, go on, who am I kidding? Here's what I had for lunch. She prepared a fresh batch of vanilla slices. Here we are with all the runway and taxiway lights. Uh up and going and uh, connected. I say up and going, I should probably flick a switch and prove the point. We're just running off a couple of double A's. There you go, you can get a bit of color there. Not much of course, because I got a little lights on, but uh, it is coming along. Now we're gonna start uh, obviously our uh, taxiway lights, which are gonna be a two-way configuration. One for the follow the greens, and the other one will just be a default wiring um, to bring them all on accordingly. So a uh, little bit of fun there. Won't go into too much detail about it. Of course, it's just LEDs, all um, parallel wiring. You all know what this is. Black to black, red to red, can't go wrong. It's gonna be a four switch system, nice and simple. Just taking a moment here to appreciate the magnitude of the situation that we are actually doing as we're uh, getting toward the end. Working on a junction here at the moment, cutting some wires and just dropped a red piece of cable. So, how's that for you? Oh, there it is. It's a bit like a game of Wes Wally. Or Wes Waldo, if you're in a different country. Well, here we are all done now. So we're all wired up, tested and ready to go. So what we've done, we've managed to break it up in rather simply. We've got uh, three AAA batteries that uh, have, we've got wired up. Now there's a magnet attached to that and a nine volt battery for the wigwags, which that's uh, wired up. We've loomed them all up onto this rather simple sort of chocolate block connection here that'll just slide in uh, to the connection and we can operate it from the switches which we're about to label. Uh, so the magnet's going to sit where the shelf is and that's got a piece of galvanized that can clip under it. So. That's it, that's the final look with the wiring. It's a great big bunch of spaghetti, but it does make sense and it is very easy to troubleshoot in the future. Now you may be noticing that I put a series of little uh, felt styled feet on this uh, particular thing. Now the reason for that is unfortunately with the way it was done, we have some LEDs like here and here and coming down the board a couple here where the lining up of them meant that it had to go through the subframe itself. You can see I haven't put a little guide hole through it if I ever need to manipulate it. And the point is, of course, these LEDs have been, here's one right here, pre-wired up with the resistor in it. And as you can see, the length of that, obviously, is by the time we come down into the board, if we come over here, and we sort of stand it up. You see where it comes and falls? So again, we can bend it back. We've still got room to do that. But by just adding that little bit of cushioning on it, by the time it comes down, it just pretty much takes that edge off. So that's the logic there. And so here we are. Here's our beautiful, nice piece of galb that we've got sitting here. Look, it's not fixed onto the shelf. It's deliberately been cut to this size for a reason. As you can see, it's not screwed or in, in or anything. We can move that accordingly in or out as required. But that's what's going to give it that nice sort of flatness uh, where we can sort of sit it on and uh, magnetic so that I can just come around underneath and then just um, magnet and stick the battery packs on them accordingly. Let's see what we can do. Aerosavvy.com is a tremendous resource with its own chapter on airport lights. I particularly like this quote. If you would like more information about airport lights, and who wouldn't, check out more in the information page. Tremendous here about taxi lights here. Um, indeed, we also talk about the safe gate system, which is indeed this uh, 
follow the greens which you'll hear me mention so aside from the airfield ground lighting system this is a situation whereby a series of segmented uh, lights will guide the uh, pilots to where they need to be whether to the runway or to the gates and just a really quick uh, demonstration on this at the moment is um, without the system you might have a uh, plane coming in and the control tower repeating back KLM 836 Taxi Runway 20 Center via Uniform 1, Victor, Zulu, Whiskey, Alpha, North Cross 3, Alpha 7, Alpha 1, Echo 1. Phew! That's a bit to say. And a bit to absorb as well. Needless to say, thanks to the SafeGate system, it's more a situation where the control tower will say, KLM 836, Taxi Runway 20 Center, follow the greens. That's it. I like the sound of that, and more and more airports are indeed adopting that now. We do know, of course, that uh, many of the um, Middle Eastern uh, airports, uh, Heathrow as well, um, if not just about all of them would be now using this system. So just like block detection that we have on our DCC model railways, it is used here in the airports. But here we are, guard lights or wigwag lights, so not to be crossing onto a... Um, runway here so it's just sorry joseph if i could just interrupt for a moment in the last video we discussed time wasting and budgets now here we are with the bush antenna mast which i actually have on my uh, older layout now i could have just nabbed that controller but no i did it myself i soldered the little board together and a bit of modification and that's how i constructed my wigwag lights for the airport but couldn't you believe it I had exactly what I needed on the layout anyway. Why on earth didn't I just take it? Here it is now in storage. And here's the antenna mast in some disappointing disarray as it's out here in storage. So here's the controller we could have just nabbed. Never even thought about it. Plug and play all the way. Oh, fiddlesticks. Could you believe it? thing as you can see also the stop bar red lights which again i have used and you'll certainly see that at the end of the runway so uh great examples of those there um as you keep scrolling down a tremendous read about uh runway lights and all the rest and uh the color sequencing again strobe lights at the end um which again i don't have but certainly could have been put in accordingly um it's just that the more we put on the more busier it gets and like any model railway for example it just does not quite look the business and here you can see it's green yellow green yellow uh, and of course with the center lights we've got the red coming in it was just not going to look good with with the wheels um, the size that they were so we come down so of course we've got those center line lights um, we've got the approach lights which I may come back later and lift up a little bit at the end there I have left a bit of room there to work with that and I have seen kits I can uh, uh, modify and that's an easy little add-on to it that's the way I designed it Again, the chasing lights I experimented with, but even in this, which is a tremendous example, you do really need a bit more distance and it's room I just don't have. Uh, touchdown zone lights, again, they do look good. I may still come back and get some smaller ones to put in, but the thing is, uh, if they're not small enough, the wheels on the model, it's just not going to uh, work the way we want it to. So, um, needless to say, there we go. And now, um, of course, beacon lights we don't see as much as we used to. And there is an absolute beauty there that is on display at the um, Naval Aviation Museum in the United States of America. Um, but uh, now you're certainly going to know a bit more than the person next time you're sitting on a plane who's accumulated a lot more frequent flyer points than you that's uh, sleeping in the business class seat beside you. But at least you'll know what all those lights mean now. So that's where I took all that inspiration from. So here we are. We've just done the labeling to the switches here. A little bit disappointed with the blowout when I drilled the holes for them, but it's a bit difficult drilling delicate uh, timber and coming through that plastic. But I do love these switches. I think it's a tremendous finish. It's just a beautiful on and off switch. Now they're labeled, of course. Now, of course, taking direction from originally Singapore Airport was the first major uh, airport to be using um, follow the greens which is a system uh, of taxi lights where segments are uh, lit up accordingly for the planes to taxi at and if we put them on you'll see a couple of key sections for how that'll work we'll go through later again 
AGL, that's airfield ground lighting. If we just push that, that'll fill in the rest as if it was just the default uh, on that. Of course, then we move over to the wigwags. And I've got wigwags uh, here and here, which of course is the caution that you're entering a runway. Um, and of course, if we just flick on the last light, which of course is the runway taxi light, you'll see that we do have the uh, runway lit up taxi lights. You'll even see a set of red lights at the end uh, for a do not enter if a plane would had just landed to want to turn in there. But the follow the greens are for one that we're going to see set up later. We can, of course, dim our lighting down a little bit. And you get a, you see there's quite a bit of glow coming in from the top there. So literally, I thought we'd just show you the rest of the runway from this angle. So as you can see, we've obviously got a set of lights that are obviously saying uh, stop accordingly. And if we were to turn off those uh, airfield ground lighting, that's obviously going to look a little more realistic. So you get what I'm, um, why I've done that specifically anyway. But you can see what we'll have here is we're actually going to have a plane in landing. That'll be, and we can also have another plane jet here and here that obviously have just moved in and moving away from, uh, from the runway. And likewise, at the end, we've still got enough staging to obviously have two or three larger jets waiting and making their way onto the runway, which is pretty much what I need. Well, now here we are. I thought I'd cull the lights off completely here and just quickly go through it briefly with you. I've tried to keep it reasonably realistic as much as I would have loved to have put some red and greens on the edge of the runway. Ren runways are typically in white lighting. There's usually a center stripe that will go down or indeed more coming up to the lead in on a runway. Even with chasing lights, I experimented that but didn't have enough. So of course, when we're coming in this configuration, the way I've laid it out, we'd be taking off from here, 27R, and at the end of the day, landing accordingly from the other end, which is why we have these follow-throughs here. Now, with the uh, follow-throughs, they would typically be green, amber, green, or green, white, green, as they trundle off to the uh, uh, off the runway. That wasn't going to work. The scale was going to get all a bit too mixed up. So I've just tried to keep it simple here. Uh, at the end of the day, as we make our way down, if we were, came in for the landing here, obviously we start to go from white into an amber lighting, just indicating we're coming toward the end of the runway. And then we've got our threshold lighting here. And of course, the, the trail out lights here accordingly, which would, would have to go further. Typically on a runway of this scale, it needs to be four or five times the length of this, which would truly head out to the wall of this room here but it would look quite good. If I could have got the LEDs a bit smaller, uh, to give you an idea, the spacing pretty much for every green one you see, if it was to the scale, there should be another one in between. Vice versa on the runway, there should be an extra two in between every one here. Of course, with a smaller LED, that is possible. I didn't have access to that. I wanted to keep it simple and user-friendly. That's why I've gone with what I've gone with. Any more than there are models that do have the smaller ones embedded into the, um, into the runway, you can certainly go out and find them as needed. But this is clean and simple, and, and as you can see, I think we've certainly got less is more for the most part. So if we start to turn them off, we're gonna turn our follow the greens off, and then we'll turn our um, airfield um, ground uh, lighting off. And then we can turn our wigwags off, which again are flashing here. And then we turn the runway and taxiways off. And that's it. Herpa do a tremendous fiber optic kit. Unfortunately, it's gone up in price over the years. About $1,700 Australian, not including the shipping. However, because you can obviously route much, much smaller holes down to, I think it's point. 2.5 to 0.5 mil you can thread them up and you can put the wheels on it looks absolutely outstanding if you're building an airport and taking it seriously that's an exceptionally small price to pay i'm not i'm more interested in spending three thousand dollars on getting overhead lighting for the model railway still something to appreciate and voila one completed model airport. Exceptionally happy with how this turned out. Again, not taking up a huge amount of space. It's clean, it's tidy. It may not be the most detailed or exact to scale. Again, we can have more fun with that with the model railway. But it's a nice, simple little project when you walk in the door for someone to look at. And I think splitting it across the layers, again, obviously not a very uh, uh, feasible thing in the real world to do. But in this situation, I think you'll agree it did work quite well. There may be some additional lighting and things we'll play with later down the track, but the important thing, she is done. 
I'm from Australia, so most of the domestic terminals I see will be filled with uh, jets by, uh, from carriers like, uh, what have we got here, Qantas certainly, we'll see Virgin, we'll see Jetstar, uh, Tiger Airways I believe we're flying there, uh, regional carriers like Rex and the like. Um, Again, future generations may take their first trip in Australia on a plane and say, oh, I want to have a, a, a model plane to keep and maybe they're going to get a whatever we flow on, uh, flown on, maybe a Qantas or something, and they can add that accordingly. I just like these particular carriers because for the ones I certainly have flown, and this could be anywhere in the world, all these carriers are flying to all the uh, key continents at the moment. But most importantly, uh, if you've had the chance of flying in business or first on any of these key carriers, you'll certainly agree it's something special. And I am missing a Cathay Pacific, but all in good time. At the end of the day, here is the airport completed. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the uh, key jets just to understand why I have them sitting here at the moment. I'll... We kick it off now with the Golf Air A340-300, a four-engine jet. Golf Air were the first to introduce the Sky Nanny service, but also a Sky Chef to the lucky people in first class where their meals would be prepared fresh. Now entering the runway, we have the Emirates 777-200LR, long range. My absolute favourite of all jets, although I would change out those Rolls-Royce engines to General Electric. However, with the uh, capability of flying in excess of 21,500 kilometres, uh, if I had an obsequious amount of money, I would personalise this jet to be my own with even more additional fuel capacity and a customised interior. But, of course, very few runways are going to accommodate this anywhere I live. Still, it is nice to dream, isn't it? Qatar Boeing 787-900 Dreamliner. So cool, it looks like it's wearing sunglasses. Flaps down on this model, some will say because it's ready for takeoff. I'm using it for a landing. Royal Jordanian Boeing 747-200. Etihad Boeing 777-300 ER Extended Range. So as we move to the upper level now, we have the Emirates Boeing 747-400 freighter. The Emirates A380. Yes, it does have a shower in first class and is an amazing thing to see in full flight. Here she is, Concorde. Yes, indeed, with Singapore Airline livery, which it actually did have on one side in real life as it code-shared alongside British Airways for a short period of time. Magnificent. Emirates Boeing 777-31H, a true workhorse in the fleet. Thai Airways Airbus A350-900. Without doubt, I love the livery on this one. 1993, see Singapore Airlines welcome Boeing's 1000th 747-400. Jumbo jet, magnificent. And on this airport, you're privileged on boarding it on the left-hand side, which was occasionally done due to some airport configurations. And I'm proud to have it on mine. Forever queen of the skies. Emirates Airbus A340-500, my first true love, my first model, and the first time I saw first class in all its glory. Singapore Airlines, Boeing 777-300. Singapore Airlines were the largest operator at one point, with this as their number one workhorse. Of course, geographically where the country's located, this was the best suited jet for so many applications. Silk Air, Airbus A320-200, Singapore Airlines sister company here, and one of the very few jets that actually fits to scale on the apron. Magnificent. Special shout out to a colleague of mine, Norm, who hand makes all of his own model planes, commercial airliners mostly, and has a room even bigger than my model railway room devoted to it. Maybe he might invite us around and we can shoot a video of this amazing collection he has. Well, that now concludes this video on the model airport. Thank you so much for watching on this one. I apologize it took a little bit of a long time, but I think you'll appreciate it was well worth it. Needless to say, the next video coming up, we're finally gonna get onto that model railway. We're gonna talk about the concept of what, of what I'm trying to achieve with that. And in the meantime, thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. Toodles.